Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic rulings and practices by the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi. May Allah prolong his life. I'm your host, Mohsin Shah, and my co host joining me, as always, Sheikh Ali Ma'ash. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Ma. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Today's topic, we've received so many of your emails, and we'll be going through the questions in regards to Nijasat. Sheikh Ma, the first question I've got here is it permissible to use the skin? of um, animals which we, rec which we have deemed to be anal najasa yani they are impure in their uh, essence for example the dog and the pig can we use their skin for crockery utensils uh, plates glasses things like that anything that we could eat and drink from bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi at-tayyibin at-tahirin basically it is not permissible and allowed to use the skin of the najis animal such as the pig or the dog and even the skin of the, the carcass or the corpse of dead animals a dead sheep for example or, or a dead cow or the ones which were not slaughtered according to the sharia law uh, the halal way we're not allowed to use them for eating or drinking as utensils or cookery so we cannot use them and to make for example cups or plates out of them and then pour the water or the food inside um, these utensils and, and use them um, because the um, the food will become najis okay. the moisture will touch the the plate or the cup and eventually it makes the um, the food <laughs> najis uh -huh. and we cannot consume it okay but what about those people who go hunting and i'm not sure if you know but they bring back the dead skin of the animal it'll have like a you go into the living room and there's a big bear or a lion or a zebra and this is because they've been hunting is that considered najis if you were to drop water on it or something like that well as i've said previously that if the hunting was uh, carried out by a muslim hunter and he said the bismillah and the rulings for uh, the sharia way of hunting then that skin of course um, let's say uh, reindeer becomes tahir and even they, we can eat that meat mm -hmm. because the hunting was halal the way it was uh, carried out you know when before shooting for example they would say bismillah and so forth all the conditions of making that hunt halal so the skin becomes halal and everything is halal to, to eat and consume and use. So um, the issue is just to do with, with the items and with the um, skins which are najis. Even though, I mean, we, we can actually use them other than eating and drinking. So we mm. can actually uh, buy bags or shoes which are made from uh, dead corpse of animals. Um, for example, we, we can buy actually bags or shoes from the Western world or from the China, from the, a non-Muslim country, mm -hmm. which was made by a dead animal, for example. Or so from, you're uh, talking about like leather belts, leather shoes. Yeah, yeah. But make sure that uh, you take it off in the salata, in the pray time. Mm -hmm. Avoid uh, touching uh, with uh, wet hands, for example. So we try to avoid them for the purpose of najasa, impurity and mm -hmm. the worship. What about in modern day society, especially in science and medicine, we know about using a pig's heart as a, for a bypass uh, operation, maybe other animals using their body parts to put inside humans to live on. Is this considered najis? In terms of using um, the skin of the dead and animals and corpse and so forth, for the purpose of treating the sick and operations, there's no obje objection, of course. I mean, you can actually use it, um, but you have to make sure that you purify your hand 
or the body part in which it touched this particular um, uh, tool which was used to treat that patient and just to purify it for the salah and so forth. Okay. Another question I sent in. Can we trust uh, a young man or a young lady? I'm thinking talking about a child here, someone under the age of Baluch. If they were to tell us that something is Tahir or something is Najis, can we actually take their word for it? The young boys or girls who are in the, um, near the age of adolescence and Baluch, if their words are reassuring, you know that boy or girl, they are both, let's say you trust their words. Mm -hmm. um, they don't, for example, they say it for a joke or a laugh or they're lying, for example. Then if their words are reassuring, then you can actually trust their words. Either you, in terms of um, purifying something to be Tahir or something that becomes Najis. So in both ways, we can actually take their words if we trust them, trust the words. Another question that I received there, this, this is quite important as well, is that how do you purify something? So if there was some blood on my shirt or um, some uh, other, other najasa, maybe a dog walked past me in, in, and it was a wet dog or something, how do I purify that item? Basically, if you have um, that substance najis on the clothes or body or any uh, item around you, then you initially you have to remove that substance first. You remove that najasa if it's a, let's say, uh, a bit of blood or something else, najis. You remove it first from the table, from the chair, from the body or the clothes, and then you wash it under the tap, if you could actually. I mean, the running water, mm -hmm. just once, it should actually uh, make it purified. So. That's oh, the, the first way. Sheikh, is there a danger of what you're using to purify something that will become nudges? For example, if I'm washing blood or uh, feces or something like that, the water I'm using to clean it and to purify it, that becomes nudges. I've got a cloth, a wet cloth. I start wiping the table because there's blood on it. Is there a chance that the cloth will become nudges if there's so much uh, liquid in it? It's on my hand. My hand is now nudges. Is there a danger of this? The rule always is that if the moisture of the najasa transfers from one place to another, then of course it will make it also nudges. So if you have a, a tissue or a napkin which is wet, for example, and it touches something nudges, of course it will transfer the najasa. And if it's in your hand and, the, and that napkin or tissue is, uh, is thin so it, in, a, in a way that it can actually transfer the moisture from the skin to your hand in which the um, tissue touched actually the, the actual substance, the, the najasa uh -huh. itself, the blood, the urine and so on, of course it will also make your hands uh, najis as well. So you have to purify as well and clean that napkin. Or, Shekhla, is it right to assume that when you go into a bathroom, the floor is nudges? If the floor gets wet, if you're doing wudu and some water drops on the floor, that water is nudges. Is it correct to assume this? Because you're in a, in a place where yeah, you know, um, urination and, and uh, you know, um, waste is removed from the body? Or is it the, the opposite that no, because um, it probably was cleaned before you came in, it was dry, dry and everything was fine, it is tahir. The water that drops on is tahir as well. The rule is always with regard to the, to the najasa that, and it's derived from the hadith, a narration that says um, everything is pure. Kullu shayn laka tahir. Until you become certain. certain that it became najis. Okay. Either by somebody telling you someone you trust, or you saw it yourself in all eyes, or you heard somebody said. Otherwise, everything is Tahir. So even okay. the floors in the bathrooms are Tahir and pure, unless you see it or somebody tells you that, yes, yesterday or a few minutes ago, there was a Najasa on the floor and the cleaner actually just mopped the, the floor without washing and so forth. So the rule is always Tahara, unless you become certain that it became Najis. Okay, Shaykhna. 
I have another question here. It's a bit odd, but it says, well, what do you do with items such as rice or flour, wheat? Um, how can you purify these items if they come into contact with Nijasa? Basically, you can either um, have the water running on these items, let's, let's say the rice, and actually removes the Nijasa from it. Or you just immerse it inside uh, water, let's say stream water or a core water that makes it actually tahir. So you have to actually go through the process of purifying uh, the rice and such like food to make it tahir for consuming because you cannot actually um, eat and consume najis uh, food or drink. So Sheikhna, uh, is there a difference between when cleaning blood or urine from, from something I mean, is extra attention given to one or the other? To purify and wash away uh, the urine or the blood or any other najis, um, if you have running water, I mean, you just put that um, thing which became najis under that, the, the type of water, and it just makes it tahir uh, straight away. The thing is, if you are in a situation that you have to have your own bottle, for example, and you go to the bathrooms or other places, you want to purify uh, the blood or the urine and so forth. Now, for the case of the urine, you have to make sure that with, with a little bit of water, like a little bottle of water or, or a cup of water, for the urine, you have to clean it twice. So two, two times mm -hmm. uh, to clean uh, that place which became najis by the urine. And that's when you've removed the najasa. Of course. Of, you can't, while it's on there, you can't pour the water twice and that's it. It's, it's, you just remove the najasa. You have to remove it first and, and then And then pour. you do it twice. Twice. That's with the urine? With the urine. Okay. For the blood, by removing the najasa itself once, so the substance itself, when it's removed from its place, then you can apply just once running water mm -hmm. from the cup, running towards uh, away from the najasa, and that will make it uh, that place, be it a hand or, or feet or, any, any, or a table or a chair, it will make it uh, tahir straight away. Ah, so just once for the blood. We've got another question coming here saying, is it okay to eat or drink something najis? Are we allowed to eat or drink something najis? For example, I have a glass of water, maybe a drop of blood fell in it or something. I had a cut on my finger, a drop of blood for it. Can I still drink that water? The colour hasn't changed, the taste hasn't changed. It is not permissible to consume food or drink which became najis, impure, by blood or anything else, any other najasa. And um, of course we have been told to always consume a tayyibat, good things, a good, good food and drink, always to use pure things. Alhamdulillah, this is one of the blessings of the religion of Islam that taught us to always drink and eat uh, food and drink, drink which are tahir. Mm -hmm. So no, of course, we, we cannot consume such food at all or drink such Absolutely. drink. Shana, this is a really good question I've got here. And it's in regards to receiving gifts which are najis. So what do we do when in the West, you know, uh, Christmas time, they might give you a, give the best employee a bottle of wine, or your neighbours might send some food over and it's, it's pork sausages or something like that. Because with Nijasa, we're not allowed to give it to somebody else, are we? So what do we do in that situation? With regard to the pork and the wine, there's no way that we can actually give it to somebody else. Let's say to a non-Muslim to consume it, because with regard to these two. Uh, um, the food and drink, pork meat and, and wine, um, we're not allowed to sell it or give it to anybody else, even those who uh, have the belief that or consider it it's, it's halal or tahir or whatever they want to have the belief in. Um, other than that, if you have, for example, uh, biscuits or chocolates with the I don't know, with animal oil, which is not slaughtered according to the Sharia law, then you can actually give it to somebody who uh, 
is not Muslim and who believes that, well, he can actually eat uh, a non-halal food. So the exception is only with the pork and the wine and alcohol that we cannot give it to anybody else. So if it had uh, extracts of chicken or extracts of beef, which was not halal, we are allowed to give that to a non-Muslim, say, look, I can't eat this, Correct. you have it. But if it's alcohol or pork, which are what we call anal najasa, they're impure in their essence, well, that cannot be Sahih, g- right. g- handled at all. That has to be thrown yeah. away. Yeah. yeah. Ascent. What about uh, gelatin, Sheikhna? I mean, we see a lot uh, things that have pork gelatin, things that have beef gelatin. And obviously there's also vegetarian gelatin now, which is available for vegetarians and vegans, which is uh, allowed. But what about the pork and the beef gelatin? Has the composition, has, the, has it changed? Has the substance changed? Or has it remained uh, one part of its original form and is still considered najis? With regard to the pork or beef gelatin, um, the beef in which was not, I mean, the, the cow's meat, which was not slaughtered according to the Sharia, not halal meat, of course, we cannot consume that kind of gelatin and um, the alternative is either to use the gelatin which came from the Islamic countries from Muslim countries okay. which is halal of course you know if, mm-hmm. if a Muslim country sells beef gelatin then it's halal so mm-hmm. we can actually buy from Muslim countries or the second option is to use the vegetarian ones the mm-hmm. vegetarian gelatins now available in many of the Western countries uh, the shops you can easily buy and we always try to refrain from anything which ha- we have uh, no certainty in it. So always there are uh, doubts about specific uh, food or drinks. So we try to stay away for the ihtiyat with precaution. Um, so the best option is to use, as I've said, uh, the vegetarian one Not or the halal one from the Muslim countries. Asantum, Shaykh. Thank you very much. Thank you to all the viewers for joining us on this discussion. Thank you for all your questions. And if you have any more questions you'd like to send in, please send them to the contact details provided. And inshallah, me and Sheikh will discuss them on the relevant topic and the relevant discussion on the show. Inshallah, we'll see you soon. Stay safe. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.